Am I on? There we go. Good morning, y'all, and welcome to Grace Night Methodist. Um, first announcement out of the gate today is that we're live. So that means that and hello. Um, and Pastor Rich, that also means that this part of the congregation back your heads for right now. Oh. No, sorry, this one. this is a side that if if you are on this side of the congregation, right. you will never be seen at all. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> if you're sorry. over here, there's a chance that you might see the tops of the back of your heads at times. That's that's pretty much it. And during communion and other sacred times, we're going to go to just a blank uh, slide with like a picture of uh, bread in the cup. So you will not be posting, mainly for the praise team and for this. Um, other sacred times, we'll go to a like a standard blank. Trying to protect everybody's privacy. I got my. <laughs> We've been talking with me facing this direction. <laughs> And I forgot that I had to take that around. Um, it also goes for, as, as Pastor Rich said, when we take communion, we have a slide up there that elements. Uh, it also goes for a children's moment. I receive a slide up there. Voices. So a few announcements. Besides the fact we're live, we also have a website. Grace Grace page you Grace.com, and that has information about upcoming events, and eventually we'll have about our staff and all kinds of things. Our, our Marianne has been working diligently on months now. Check that out. I encourage you. Forever not here on Monday, watch this live, live service. Couple other things going on in the life of the church. Our widows and widowers uh, Valentine's Day at uh, it's going to be a catered event and the RSVP by this. Um, let us know anybody that wants to love to have them come. Our women's Bible study but, uh, by the fourth this month. All women's study on growing older and that is going to be Wednesday night. At Grace, this in our midst, uh, there is a Super Bowl party at my place. This Gather at six, we'll have as long talk about who you are or not. Um. <laughs> But any and all youth are welcome to come out to that event. We Fal need Falcons. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, he'll say it, I won't. <laughs> um, if you need my address, come see me afterwards, and I'm happy to give you directions to my place. Coming up this week in the life of the church, we have a staff parish relations committee meeting Monday at 6.30. Uh, Culture Shock Bible study continues Tuesday at 7, and Disciple continues Thursday at 7. Thursday is also our preschool Valentine church. Friend dinner. I come out to that. Of course, our widows and widows. Let's start our worship service off with a word of prayer. This, Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to come out and to join with our brothers and sisters. Lord, as we move throughout this service, help us to realize your presence here among us. May our minds and hearts be open to what you would have to say to us, whether it's word. Pastor Rich's sermon or worship. Lord, may we have presence here among us. May we go forth from this gathered here. Bring your tired and bring your shame. Bring your guilt and bring your pain. Don't you know that's not your name? You will always be much more to me. And every day I wrestle with the voices that keep telling me I'm not right. But that's all right. 
I invite the children to come forward. We're changing things up a little bit because kids haven't been getting quite enough time in Sunday school, so we're going to do two songs, two songs and then prayer, and then two songs to finish. The other thing is, uh, this, is the, this is what you'll see on the internet right now, is this slide. Uh, we've made the decision to not uh, broadcast the, the children at all, and so the only thing you'll see, you'll hear my voice, you'll see this particular slide on the internet. So there's no active video right now. Um, felt like that was a good way to protect our children. How you guys doing? I've got you. I've got a scratchy throat, so you're, you get the you get the froggy voice today. Um, a question for you: Who who is mighty here? Who's tough? Ah, I got a couple over here. Go over here. Who else? Okay, got, got a bunch of them. Over there. What's what's who, what's the like most powerful part of your body? Huh? Arms, legs, what? Huh? Okay, so your arms? Let's see what kind of muscles you got there. You got to make a muscle. Oh, boy. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what else? Oh, your heart. Oh, I like that. I go a whole different direction than I was going there, isn't it? That's very, very true. That's outstanding. Huh? Oh, she stole your answer. <laughs> Nice job. <laughs> anybody else? Anybody, anybody run here? Do we have any runners? Huh? You like to run? Are your legs nice and powerful? Yeah? You like to run? Okay. Play basketball, so you got your legs got to be soccer, so you need your legs too, huh? Yeah, so the legs are real powerful, but I, I've got one that's even more powerful than all of that. What do you think it might be? Well, pr actually, that's almost exactly where I'm going, okay? Because it's, it's not your legs, not your arms, it's this thing, tongue. Realize that? Why, why do I say the tongue is the most powerful? Let me, let me ask you this. Has anybody ever made fun of you for something? Yeah? I think we've all been made fun of, haven't we? Doesn't that hurt? That, sometimes that hurts more than getting punched in the arm, doesn't it? Because it hurts your heart real bad. And we realize that the things that we say are very, very powerful. Words can be very powerful. And so we need to be very, very careful. We need to be able to listen, think before we speak, right? Because the things that you say, you know, you know how you've been hurt at times when somebody said something not nice? Well, there's probably a pretty good chance you've said something that's hurt somebody else. That's hurt. Okay, and if you know that, then then we need you need to talk to God about that, and maybe talk to that person and what apologize. Yeah, because words are very very powerful. So I want you guys to remember that while you might be out there playing basketball and soccer and running, 
legs might get real powerful, or maybe you're playing baseball or basketball and your arms are getting real powerful. The most powerful thing is that tongue because so bad. The last thing we want to do is hurt people, right? So let's gather around. Let's pray. Oh, Audrey into the circle there. No? All right, everybody in? All right, let's bow our heads and pray, and the whole congregation will help us. Dear God, thank you for this. Thank you for our lives. Help us to be wise, be loving. Use our words. And we pray. Amen. Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light, anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight, anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served, I know, I know, I know, I know. God is on the
we go into our time of prayer this morning, I just want to mention one concern. Uh, Pastor Rich has been serving on our board, the board for health care for our years now, and um, the, that board recently resigned, and they have chosen Pastor Rich to take on that responsibility. Sounds like an honor, it's, and it is in a sense, um, but it's a lot of hard work. Our, our health care board has been working for years, especially since the Care Act has been trying to work out how best to that our pastor covered health care without really draining our churches to do so um, they make a lot of really hard tough decisions and which is in charge of that we appreciate your prayers for that as they are then possible to have more questions about it see pastor rich both kinds of it's not an easy board to serve on. I takes on that. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Father God, we once again thank you for an opportunity to come and worship alongside our brothers and sisters. We know that long before any of us enter the building today. We feel your presence in. For this day, we give you thanks in ways that you've been working in individuals. We thank you for, for those who have had surgery and recently are now in the process of for those who are attacked and are now in the process for those, Lord, who are battling cancer and are Lord, while we give you how things that um, when we pray for Pastor Rich as he takes on the role as the chair of our health care I didn't speak on
Lord, this day we also pray for those gathering, facing upcoming illness. Pray for those who are grieving every day. Might be depression, old grief. Lord, we pray for our nation, world, and leaders around the world. Lord, we pray for an end. Pray for an end of prayer. And end. Lord, as we are worship, take to heart the message of Pastor Richard. Body of this. Pray we hear what else you All Father, Barton, give us the day our
splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? And all will see how great, how great is our God. God say amen. I have uh, some good news for you this morning. I just have a praise to lift up before we continue on in worship. Um, speaking to Steph before the service, and it looks like Rob is coming home on Saturday. Charge from the Rouse. Yep. Now, far from asking you to back off on the prayers, I'm going to ask that many more because as, as he does come home, he's ready to come home, that, uh, they're going to need lots of prayers. Uh, there are some things that are going to have to be done at the house and just prepare and get ready, but um, you know, it, it's a scary time when somebody's been in the hospital long to 
home and so, uh, prayers for Steph especially and, and Carmen and Roman is really get ready to welcome him but uh, I, I'm sure I, I said um, his progress ought to just take off. God is good has brought him through a long long time of trial and that he's got time ahead of him yet but Well, this morning, we, uh, we touch on another subject in James. I've hit the book of James a few times lately, and you know, James will make you cringe at times. James will, you read through James, and, and James does not pull any punches. you got to love James because, you know, he gets in there and he just really gets down to it. And, and we find that so many things that we talk about in the book of James, we've all been guilty of at points. It's amazing how there, as you read this, this book of James, it seems as though he is speaking right he is. This is the living word of God. The living word of God ready to speak to, speak right into your life. God is I'm going to turn to the third chapter of. Not many of you should become teachers because you know that we judged more. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say, perfect. Able to keep their whole body in check. We put bits into the mouths of horses to make them open. Turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong wind, they are steered by a very small rudder where a pilot wants. Likewise, tongue is a small part of them. It makes great bones. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. Tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body. That's the whole course of one's life on fire is itself all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. No human being the restless. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings made in out of the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same Brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear fig? Either. Friends, this God, we do thank you for your servant, James, faithfully gave us what you had to do, for he does not pull. Help us to hear. You know, yeah, I know, I love this picture. I, I came across this on the internet, and I thought, how, how perfect is this? Now, we all know somebody. James makes it abundantly clear that all the, although the tongue is a very small part of the body, very powerful. The words we use, whether spoken or written, are some of the most powerful things on this earth. You know, we were all to- taught when we were kids that sticks and stones can break my bones, but how's that work for you? Not really true, is it? You know, just because the tongue is rather small, it does not take away from its power. This is a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier. It's, um, I don't know if this is the, the Carl Vinson or not. It, it, I like it, though. The Carl Vinson is, is, Vinson is an amazing ship. Listen to this. It's, it's as tall as a 24-story building. Think about that for a second. You know, we've got, what, three floors here. Think about 24-story building, how tall that is. Huge. 
The flight deck is nearly 1,100 feet. It carries a crew of, ready for this? 6,000. I mean, it's like, it's like a floating city out there in the ocean. It can, a floating city that can go anywhere in the world. Weighs about 100,000 tons. Think about that. That's a big number. 100,000 tons. But the rudder that steers it, and it appears. It's just a tiny fraction of that whole thing. But without that rudder, it would be all over the place. It would not be able to steer in any one direction. It would wander aimlessly. 100,000 tons of steel and other material controlled by that relative. James says the rudder is like the tongue, small, powerful. Bullying is, has been a problem for, for eons. I think all of us at one time or another have either been bullied or you were the bully. <laughs> but bullying doesn't look the same as most of us. Yeah, there's still some old-fashioned pushing and shoving and bullying that goes around, but so much of the bullying today has moved out of the classroom and onto the internet. Think about it. Kids are bullied online with words like never before. And when somebody is bullied on the internet, what used to be a little handwritten note that got passed around school and maybe 10 or 20 kids saw, can now go on the internet for millions of Kids have a worldwide audience. Find out just how powerful. What we find is that if we can master our tongues, we can master our lives. Taming the tongue is a great sermon to have during a political, political active season. Politicians remind us every single day how destructive the tongue can be. We're going to look at this prime example of how the tongue can destroy you. Remember who this is? You don't even remember. He got so destroyed in 2004 that you, half of you probably don't even remember his name. That's Howard Dean. And in the early parts of the 2004 election cycle, Howard Dean was the front runner. He was way out in front. Everybody was getting excited about Howard Dean. Howard Dean was a, was a physician, a doctor, and, and he was ready to go in and just Sweep through and take the, the president's So that one day he got up there to make a speech. His tongue got the best of him. He said a few quite foolish things, and then what really put it over the edge was the yelling and screaming that he did. He was shaking that arm, and he was hooting and hollering and yelling. Howard Dean never knew what hit him. Went from front runner, nobody over. You know, it's amazing. We've had politicians do all kinds of immoral or even illegal things and get away with it. But the minute someone begins to spout off with their mouth, they're all but left behind. Tongue can make or break politicians. You know, the most successful ones, they, they speak and they, they do very well. They convince people of things. They talk a great game. Why bring up politics? Well, Politics is a good example, a good indicator on how taming the lives, either for the good or for the good. A good example that the things we matter, not just for politics, all of them. If you can master the tongue, master you. Realize that Tongue is one of the biggest things hurting the church today. And I'm not talking just race church. I'm talking the church is constantly by people that cannot control their tongue. And it's been, been explained to me, and I've seen it talked about, out of all the people in the church and most organizations, you've got 10% over here on one side that are loud and radical, 10% over here that are loud and radical, and most of us fall in that eight middle that can have a rational but the ones on the left and the right that are loud and radical nasty 
They're the ones who get hurt. They're the ones whose voices are heard too loudly. I think most of us know that I don't want to dwell on that. What I want to do is flip it around and look. Know what an absolute blessing and encouragement. You realize that when we, we put the tongue as the most powerful part of the body, would you? It makes a When we use the tongue to be encouragers, begin to lift up the body of Christ one at a time. Listen, your mom was right. Your mother was right. Whoever you are, your mom was right. She said, probably said to you, if you don't have anything good to say, I can't speak for you, but I love to be places where people are encouraging each other and lifting each other. It feels good when someone walks up to you and tells you how good it is to see. Those are the kind of people I want to be around and so do others. We've got this incredible message. We've got a whole world out there to share this message with. We have good news like no other good news that has ever been shared. And as we are positive, encouraging, we'll get that many more chances. That most powerful. So how do you tame the tongue? James sounds almost negative in this, doesn't he? He says basically that no person can tame the tongue. That sounds pretty depressing. I don't think he's saying that it can. All he's saying is it can't be. Friends, if we're going to tame our tongues, we, are, we need to be asking God to do it for us, to fill us with His Holy Spirit, to, to help us to stop and be in constant. Have that sort of relationship with God. Things that come out of our mouths sound God-like. God has told us that as we ask those things, we believe in Christ and we ask for those things, James gives us some real practical advice, too. Chapter 1, verse 19, he says, Quick to listen and slow to speak. Think about it. I love that little that old saying. We've got what? Ears and one mouth. It means we ought to be listening twice as much as we need to listen. Chapter 1, verse 26, Keep a tight rein on your tongue. If you don't have anything nice to say, got it. Your mom was right. I know that's hard to admit sometimes. 4.11 and 5.9, refuse to tear other people down. Don't fall into the trap of hurting people. What we say matters. What we say. I heard the kids down here. I don't think one of them didn't raise their hand when I said, Hurt by Finally, from chapter 5, verse 12, only that which by our that was found in this message. This morning we're gonna we're gonna receive communion in just a moment. Think about it as you receive the most holy moments. Where, where do you take that bite of bread and that sin? So this morning, as you prepare your hearts to receive the sacrament, ask God to call whatever the past holds. Ask Him to prepare your heart as well as your tongue to receive the holy meal. Let us be encouragers that whatever comes from God, we are so grateful that you are indeed. Lord, we just ask that you fill us with your 
allow us to, to tame our tongue, encourage her, not tear her. Thanks is more holy. I want to remind you also before, since this live streaming is all new, as we receive union this morning, also be wide. So it will not be on the internet. Um, you'll be able to hear a little bit. That's exactly what everybody's going to be able to hear the liturgy. I invite you to turn your hymnal 12. Prepare to receive. A reminder in the Methodist Church that we do not believe that this is gracious for its Pastor Rich or my table, but it is the Lord's table. So all are welcome to come to this. So on page 12, I invite you to hear these words of invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and live in peace. Confess our sin before God. Merciful God, we confess that we loved you. We have failed to be. We have not done your will. Broken your love. Have rebelled against. Cry of the. Give us. Yes, for joyful. Christ. Brothers, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Up on page 13, the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their un Holy, holy, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who came the Lord. Hosanna in Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of suffering, death, and resurrection, gave birth to your delivered us from slavery to death, and made with us a new covenant by water. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Christ took bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat the body which is this. When the supper was over, he took thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, This is a lot of the new covenant poured out for you. Often as you So, in remembrance of these your mighty acts of Christ, we offer praise and Holy and living sacrifice with Christ offered. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gifts of bread and wine. Then be for us the body and blood of Christ that we. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one to all the world. Your Son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and your whole world, honor and glory is your. Reminder: We do have gluten. Today we're going to be passing the elements. Pass it. Bread that you. Would, everyone. Rise with the. 
pass through the rows once it right.
Father God, we thank you for the sacraments of your Son, Jesus Christ. Opportunity to When the solid ground is falling out from underneath my feet Between the black skies and my red eyes, I can barely see When I realize I've been sold out by my friends and my family I can feel the rain reminding me In the eye of the storm, you remain in control See the future, I picture, slowly fade away. And when the tears of pain and heartache are pouring down my face, I find my peace in Jesus' name. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. So we remember as the that, that the tongue is so powerful. The words that you use matter. Go out and build this world up. In the name of Christ, go out and be in Christ. So every knee would bend and every tongue confess Christ is Father. Amen.